Welcome to the Cell Store Analogs Inspection System. In this session, I will be showing you how to use the Cell Store system to determine the condition of your analogs and find any issues that may affect the performance. Before we start, I'd like to take a quick look at cell geometry. This will help us better understand what it is that we're going to be measuring. So here we have a top view of an analog cell and also a cross-section view of an analog cell. These are the areas that we're interested in. So we're looking at the cell width there, which is the cell opening, the cell wall, and also the cell depth. Now, two things that can affect the volume of an analox. Uh, the first one is ink contamination in the cell, uh, which will give us uh, volume loss, and also surface wear, which again results in a volume loss. As the walls wear at the top, we'll notice that they start to become thicker. So they're the areas of the cells that we're interested in. Now let's take a look at the cell store software. Okay, so here we are able to select our lenses uh, and we have the vertical cursors for our measurement. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the roll number of the cylinder that I'm looking at. So I'm just going to put a generic in here, A, B, D, three, and I'm going to update that information. And now that has gone into the specifications box. Now using the microscope, I'm going to obtain my image. So using the controls on the microscope, this is the coarse focus, and this is the fine focus. Uh, the coarse focus will give me 30 mil of travel the fine focus will give me two millimeters of travel. So I'm going to switch on the light source here. There's the control for the dimmer. And I'm going to obtain my image. Okay. So there we have our cells. The next thing I need to do is I need to align the cells so they correspond with the cursor so that I can take my measurements. And I'm going to do this by rotating the camera, which is if I loosen that screw there, I can rotate the camera and that will allow me to square the cells to the cursors. So I'm just going to do that now. So loosen off the screw and square the cells so that I can now see the vertical cell walls. Now that I've got my image, I need to check to make sure that the lens selection in the software corresponds with the lens in the microscope. Now the microscope has three lenses mounted in the nose piece and one additional. So I'm using the times 20 for this demonstration. So I've selected times 20 and this will tie in our calibration and give us our correct results below. So the first reading that I'm going to take is going to be the depth reading. We do this via differential focus, which means we focus on the top of the cell. Then we set the, get, set the depth gauge, then focus down to the bottom of the cell, which will give us our depth reading. So I'm going to look at this area here for the surface of the cell. So I'm going to make sure that I'm focused on that. Turn my light down a little. Focus there this part here now is in focus now what i need to do is i need to zero the depth gauge i'm going to do this by pressing the yellow button on the front of the depth gauge once so at the moment we're reading 33 microns click that once and now we have zero microns the next thing i'm going to do is i'm now going to focus at the bottom of the cell so I'm going to just put my light up a little, plenty of light there, and then I'm going to focus down to the bottom of the cell. Now when I focus down to the bottom of the cell, I'm actually going to go beyond the bottom. So it's out of focus, and then I'm going to come back. And the first thing I see that's in focus... I'm going to use that as the bottom of my cell. So there. 
So now we have a reading of 35 microns. So depth, cell depth, 35 microns. Now just to double check this, I'm going to zero the clock again and do that in reverse. So again, by pressing the button on the front of the clock, my reading goes to zero. And then I'm going to focus back up to the original point here. I'm happy with that <clears throat> and that again gives me 35 microns. Next I'm going to take a measurement of the cell opening and the cell wall. I'm going to do this using the cursors. So I'm going to cell wall B, so using the B cursors I'm going to place these cursors over the cell wall there and the width Using the A lines, I'm going to place here. Now, we aren't going to get the cell walls are never going to be perfectly square. So at this moment, we're interested in taking the averages through the cell wall. Later, you'll understand why the differences will be greater when the cell is damaged. Um, so a couple of microns at this stage isn't such a great problem. So now I have all my data. We have 74 microns for the cell width, 8.2 microns for the cell wall, and 36 microns, 35 microns for the depth. Now I'm going to save that data I'm going to create a report as a first time measurement. So I create a report. I'm going to give this the same file number as the roll number. So this is A, B, C, one, two, three. I'm going to save that information. That will open up the template and save the data from the cell store program into the report sheet. So we have our saved image and we have all our measurements that we took from the cell store program. At the top of the sheet, we have information here that's entered manually by the operator. Uh, this is information that can be supplied uh, from your uh, analog supplier, uh, all the information that they gave you at the time. Uh, if that information is available. Uh, also, we have uh, an option here to enter volume reading from third party equipment. And that's all our data saved. That's a first time measurement. So we can save that, and close that down. The next thing I'm going to show you is the difference between a clean cell and a plugged cell. So if we go back to the cell store program, obtain our image again, and this time we're looking at plugged cells. So you can see immediately the difference between a freshly engraved cell, a clean cell, versus a cell that's got ink residue, which is plugged. We can see the contamination there in the bottom of the cells. Now, what we can do at this point is I can increase the magnification so we can take a closer look. So I'm going to change now from my times 20 objective. I'm going to change up to my times 40 objective. OK, so there we go. So again, I'm going to focus on the top of the cell here, and then I'm going to take a zero reading. So I'm going to zero my 
zero my clock. So focus on the top, zero the clock. And now I'm going to focus down to the bottom of the cell. Which we have here. Now you can see the difference. Our original engraved cell was at 35 microns. Now we've got a cell blocked with ink and we've got a reading of 8 microns. So they're the differences that you're looking for with ink contamination. They're going to be fairly obvious. We don't need to take any measurements at that time. You can choose a course of action from here. Clean the cylinder, etc. Replace the cylinder. Just an overview again. So they're the cells again. So I am just going to, <clears throat> I'm going to just save that. I'm not going to save any of the data. I'm just going to, just to show you the difference between the cells, I'm just going to add this image to our report. So I'm going to add to report this time. I'm going to choose the, set, the roll number. I'm going to save that. Yes, I'm going to overwrite it. Now we've created a second sheet where we've taken the first saved image and our current saved image and now we can compare those side by side. So again, for purposes to highlight the uh, plugin, we're not going to save any data at this point. I'm just showing the difference between clean analogs and a dirty analogs. So I'll close that down. The next thing we're going to be looking at is a worn cylinder. So I will obtain my image. I'm going to focus down onto the cell. Right, now this is the same cylinder, but a worn part of the cylinder. Now you can see the differences there in the cell wall. When I said earlier, it wouldn't matter too much whether taking an average through the cell wall wasn't going to be a, a big deal. Uh, when you start to get wear on the cylinders, you will notice a considerable thickening of the wall. So we're now going to take some measurements um, of this wear. So again, I check my objective times 20 selected. I've got my roll number in there, so I know that I'm looking at the same cylinder. And I'm going to take, first of all, I'm going to take a depth reading. So I'm going to focus on the top of the cell. Let's just look at this part here. And I'm going to zero the clock. And now I'm going to focus down to the bottom of the cell. Which is there. Now we can see our reading is 25 microns. So we've lost 10 microns off the surface of the cell. We're now at 25 microns. So I'm going to zero that again. I'm going to come back to the top of the cell. Okay. So again, we've got 25 microns and now I'm going to measure the wall again. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to take an average through the wall using the B cursors there and the cell opening here. Now I'm going to save that data to my existing report. Add to report. Roll number, save, yes. Okay. So here we've got the original condition of the analogs. That was at the point that we took our first measurement, whether that be uh, a new cylinder or a cil cylinder that's uh, currently in, in the press. And now we've taken a measurement after a period of time and we're looking for where and you can see clearly the difference between a nice fresh analog cell and a worn cell.
if we now look at the data that we've collected from the two images, we can see that the cell wall from a start of 74 microns, we've now reduced the opening to 65.9 microns. Our cell wall has gone from our nice 8.2 microns, it's now thickened up to 18 microns. And our cell depth, originally we've got 36 microns, now we're looking at 25 microns. So we can see there that we've got considerable wear on the cylinder. Our depth is our first indicator of that. We can see that we've got a reduced depth from originally from 36 down to 25. And then we can see the result of that, which has meant that we've got uh, a lot thicker walls. Now, this part of the report sheet is so that we can set tolerances for the operators when taking measurements. So this section here, this will be filled in by an ad administrator uh, to determine what percentages are out of tolerance, in which case you need to take action. So at the moment, we have 74 microns original, our current is 65, and that's giving us uh, a negative 10.95. Again, with the cell wall, we started off with 8.2, we're now 18.1. We've got a tolerance of 10% on that, and that is 120% larger than it was before. So again, we've got that indicated in red to say that we need to take action at that point. That has gone beyond our allowed 10% increase. Same again with the depth, 36 microns to 25 microns, 10% tolerance, we've got 30%. So we've got a problem. We're highlighted again there in red to say that we need to take action. The bottom of the sheet, we can place observations in at this point. So cell contamination, uh, we can add that in. Uh, we can, any notes that you want to make on uh, cell wall wear, you can add those. Anything else you notice about the cylinder, scoring, straining, striations, anything like that can be added at that point. So now we've got our first original saved image. We've then got the plugged image, which I showed you. So you can clearly see that the plugged image looks considerably different from the clean image. And then finally, we've got our worn image. And you can see there considerable thickening of the cell walls. First indication of where we've gone and checked our depth. We can see what our depth is. And we can also see that we're out of tolerance on this cylinder. So at this point, we need to take action. That concludes our cell store demonstration for today. Thank you very much for watching.